Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Spirit, break out. Hallelujah. We want to see your kingdom here. Um, I trust that you all feel, as I do, uh, that our walk with Christ is not about checking boxes, but having an experience. And, uh, and that's the desire to have an experience with God uh, wherein he changes us, wherein he helps us to be everything that he's called for us to be, uh, wherein he assists us in growing past what even we thought was possible for ourselves. Uh, and so that's our desire. Uh, so I'm excited to be with you guys tonight. Thank you so much for being here. C4C JBC family. Uh, as always, I invite you guys to send out a text message to your brothers and sisters in Christ. If you don't see them here, uh, let them know, hey, uh, we want to see you. Hey, uh, the table is spread. The feast of the Lord is going on. And your presence is desired as we grow together. Amen. So if you haven't done that already, please scan the room. Uh, I'm, I'm asking you, I'm begging you. I ain't too proud to beg. Uh, don't let it go in one ear and out the other. Scan the room. Check and see if your brothers and sisters in Christ are at the table. You know, uh, sometimes it could be, hey, I just got a little bit tired today and maybe they just need you to encourage them. Hey, make Bible study. Or maybe they just forgot it was Wednesday. Sometimes the week get like that, you know, where you just, you're doing so much and you're running so much. Uh, that you just kind of forget what day it is. So let somebody know we're about to get started before I get started. I see my little cousin up here, Jameer. Man, good to see you. Uh, listen, guys, for all of you guys who do not know, this is my awesome, awesome little cousin, uh, amazing young man, uh, more than anything, an amazing young man. Also been given a tremendous gift in the area of, of sports, and he plays basketball overseas and uh, just is really doing some really awesome things. Uh, so, dude, we love you, man. Thank you so much for uh, chopping it up with us, for being here tonight. Uh, to my big cousin, uh, Tamika. Uh, Tamika is a, a workhorse in C4C, if y'all don't know. She she runs the calendar for the prayer ministry. She makes sure everybody on their P's and Q's, she, she be sending the emails out, getting us in, in order and getting us straight. So thank you so much for your continued service and sacrifice. We love you guys. Jameer, you want to say anything before we get rolling, man? Uh, thank you, first first and foremost. Um, I'm happy to be here. Um. My cousin Shannon, she told me to join along, and I just want to. I just want to get close. I just. I just wanted to be here. I think it was. I think it's important that I'm here. So awesome, awesome, awesome! Huge shout out to Shannon, guys. This is what I'm talking about. This is what it is when we strengthen each other. So Shannon is like, "Yo, I see something that's helping me to grow. You should check it out." And so she sends that message, and he responds. He responds, right? This is what it's all about, guys. So let's continue to do that to each other. Thank you again so much for being here, Jameer. Shannon, thank you so much. We appreciate you. Uh, yeah, that's what it's all about. So, all right, we're about to get rolling. Keep sending out the text message if you haven't done it already. Super stoked about seeing you guys up here this evening. We're going to pray and then we're going to get started. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your presence in our lives amidst the hustle and bustle of life. In spite of the hills and valleys that we face, God, we see your glory and we see your kindness. We don't take our moment here for granted. We understand that there was a lot of individuals who wish they could have this moment with you, this moment uh, to learn more of you, this moment to walk more closely to you, this moment to have you speak to their spirit and to their heart. And so, God, we ask that you do specifically that, that you would speak, Holy Spirit, uh, that you would give us the words that would bring new life, that we would exit our time together knowing more about you and feeling compelled to be more like you. Uh, God, we thank you for opportunities for growth and development. We thank you for being in relationship with you. And we pray, God, that we would continue to be everything that you have called for us to be. We love you and we bless you. 
speak Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, so once again, thank you all for being here. We have been working on uh, a lesson, a series of sorts, developing self-discipline while growing toward excellence. We began the conversation talking about prayer. We, we went from prayer to talking about compassion. And for the last few weeks, we've been talking about forgiveness. We started with the focus of forgiveness. Uh, and after we did the focus of forgiveness, we moved to uh, the function of forgiveness. And so what we've been working on lately is actually implementing strategies to assist us, right, in walking out this thing called forgiveness. And it is absolutely imperative as believers uh, that we are intentional about walking out the process of forgiveness. Uh, so we've touched on it a few times about what forgiveness is not. Forgiveness is not just getting over it. Right. Forgiveness is not time just working it out for us and making us feel better about the situation or the circumstance. Right. Uh, forgiveness is an intentional motivation as a believer to let a situation or circumstance go before you feel like it. Uh, it's I'm still in the middle of my feelings. I'm still in the middle of being upset. I'm still in the middle of being bothered. But because I want to be like Jesus, I'm going to let it go. Now, letting it go doesn't mean repositioning yourself to allow whoever, whatever individual hurt you to have access to do it again. That's not what I'm saying. So I'm not saying be uh, uh, be foolish. I'm not saying be naive. I'm not saying any of those things. Uh, don't don't be uh, uh, don't don't get walked over by individuals. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is. If you hold that grudge and you hold that offense, what you do is you remove yourself uh, from the space wherein you need to be to access the fullness of God in your life. And that part is wild and crazy because it's like, yeah, if you didn't even feel like you did anything wrong and you don't feel like you're the person who was in the wrong, just by me holding on to the grudge and maintaining that bitterness, I could disqualify myself from receiving some of the things that God has specifically for my life. Yes, absolutely. You can. Absolutely. You can. Uh, so, so it's so important that we went over earlier that that uh that God says if you have a gift that you bring to the altar that means if you're bringing a gift to God God says and you have an offense in your heart against your brother he says leave your gift there he said Paul put it put everything on Paul's go find your brother and settle your dispute that's how that's how serious it is and I love the way that God loves us right because God is like hey I don't want you to offer a sacrifice to me and then me not be able to give you everything I want to give you for the sacrifice you offer. So don't even give it to me yet. Hold what you got. Hold what you got. Go find your brother or your sister and 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 settle whatever dispute that you have going on in the moment, right? Uh, so, so we've been working on actually implementing some strategies to be able to assist us in this regard. Uh, really quickly, by way of summary, our first one was to uh, commit our decision to God, right? Uh, to make it a matter of regular prayer, asking God uh, to show us how to go about doing what it is that he's called for us to do. Our second was to read the scripture because you're only going to pour out what you put in. So like, you know, it it, it sounds good to say, you know, I'm going to forgive you. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it go. But if everything you put in is pushing you more toward your emotional self, if everything you put in is pushing you more toward your old self, if everything you put in is pushing you more toward, you know, uh, uh, the reality is everybody got that that some that that semi ratchet side, you know, whether y'all want to admit it or not. I know everybody the master looking like Sunday morning, but everybody still got that semi ratchet side, right? So, so if everything you pour in is pushing you back to that part of you, eventually what's going to come out is that part of you. You know what I mean? So you, you can't expect to get something out that you haven't taken the time to pour in. And so our scripture, uh, or reading the scriptures and digesting the scriptures, and allowing God to speak in and through us, that's why that's imperative. A third was understanding the circumstances, right? To understand that God's not only working in us, but God's working around us. Like God is so much in control, even in moments of our frustration, 
even in moments of our anger, God is still in control. Uh, and, and so we talked about understanding the circumstance last week, I believe. Uh, that was where we ended. And so this week, we're going to move into number four. Uh, number four is seeking godly advice. Seeking godly advice. Uh, uh, God has given some people a special gift of wisdom. And when we face certain decisions, it is often helpful to seek wise counsel. So seeking godly advice. Do me a favor. Uh, say it to yourself. Type it in the chat. Just somebody say, look for it. Look for it. Look for it. Look for it. Uh, I think that part is important, right? Uh, because, because if we don't, if we don't look for it, uh, what will end up happening is that uh, we'll find everything else except what it is that we need to find. Okay, so the first scripture I want to talk about tonight is the book of Psalm, uh, the first chapter, uh, verses one through three. You may be familiar with it. Uh, Psalm, the first chapter, verses one through three. I don't know if Minister Rob, if he's still up here, if you can. Pull it up for me. If not, it's cool. We'll keep moving forward. Uh, it says it like this. Uh, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor seats, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on the law he meditates day and night. Right? Uh, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Let me tell you, you don't never have to look for ungodly advice. You will never have to seek it out. It is there. It's always there. It's going to be there. Ungodly advice is always going to be knocking on your door. You ever had somebody give you unsolicited advice? Where like, you know, you didn't even ask them and they start telling you what they would do and how, how you should feel about the situation, the situation, not even their situation, but they're telling you how you need to feel about it. Man, if I was you, I think I feel like this. If I was you, I'd do that. Well, you're not me, right? And 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 uh, in the nicest way possible, I didn't ask you and ain't nobody got time for that, right? Sometimes you just got to tell people, I, I don't have time for that one right there, right? You will never have to seek ungodly advice. It will always be present. And so the Psalm says, blessed is the individual who does not walk in step with that advice. Uh, that advice is so prevalent. That advice is so accessible uh, that it says that don't walk in it, don't sit in it, uh, that don't stand in it, right? Uh, but he says, this is what you do. You meditate on God's law and on God's way. Right. And when you begin to meditate on God's law and God's way, what you'll find is you'll seek out that which you meditate on. I'm going to say it again. I don't want you to miss it. You'll seek out what you meditate on. Uh, what you desire is what you go looking for. Right. Uh, and that's in everything in life. That's in everything in life. If you ever met anybody who was an entrepreneur, right? Uh, what you'll see is they, they're always at a conference about entrepreneurship and about how to grow your business and about how to grow your company, right? Because that's what they meditate on. If you if you know somebody who's a fitness guru, right? They're always talking about, oh, this is the new thing and this is the new this and this is the new that, right? Because that's what they meditate on. Whatever it is that you meditate on is what you're going to seek out. Uh, so scripture, it, it encourages us. It says, listen, uh, don't walk in the way of, of the ungodly and, and, and don't, don't stand in their way and don't sit in their way. But this is what you do. You meditate on God's law, right? You meditate on God's way. And, and this is what happens when you meditate on God's way, right? When you meditate on God's way, this is what it says. And you'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, uh, which tree yields fruit uh, in its season and its leaf does not wither, right? And whatsoever you do shall prosper, right? And, and this is the thing, what you do prospers, not because everything you do, you do it the right way. Uh, I'm going to step on some righteous toes, right? For, for a second. Okay. Y'all, y'all forgive me. Uh, it's not always about what you do. Oftentimes it's about your intention and your heart behind the matter and whether or not you're seeking God through the process. 
right? So the scripture says, listen, if you delight in the way of the Lord, and if you focus on the way of the Lord, it says you'll be like a tree planted. That means I got roots that run deep. That means I'm right next to the river of water. That means that I'm always in a position where I have enough of him, right? Let's take the focus off stuff for a second. I have enough of him so that I can be what it is that he's created and called for me to be. All right. So when you're planted, when you're planted now, uh, the, the scripture says whose whose uh, tree yields its fruit in its season and whose leaf does not wither. Leaf never wither. wither. Now, this is the thing that got me, uh, Deacon and Cheryl. Uh, so I'm reading the scripture and I'm thinking about my experience, uh, just, you know, uh, uh, just being outside and growing up and everything like that. And what I realize is uh, every tree I've ever seen has a season where it withers. Every tree I've ever seen, like even the trees that live like in the tropical areas, they don't, they're not always at their best, right? God's saying, listen, if you delight yourself in me, if you focus on what I'm asking you to focus on, if you push and pour internally, what I'm asking you to push and pour internally, I will keep you at a steady place, right? Wherein you will always feel my presence. You will always see my glory. Even, even on the bad days, you'll still be able to experience me, right? Right? And, and your tree will never be in a position where it begins to wither. It'll never be in a position where it seems to be lifeless. It'll never be in a position where it operates in lack because you're planted by me and you're provided for by me, right? This is what happens when we seek godly advice. Uh, Proverbs 15, 22, uh, Without counsel, plans fail, but with many advisors, they succeed. So what are you talking about, Pastor Nate? Like when you get in your feelings, now, uh, you know, everybody got that one friend who going to ride with you no matter what, right? That one friend who going to tell you you right when you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but that one friend, they're going to ride with you no matter what. And, and most often, that's the individual we call when we find ourselves in these type of positions. Don't call that person. That's not the one. I'm not saying that they're not a good friend. I'm not saying that they're not reliable. I'm not saying any of that. What I'm telling you is, uh, what I'm telling you is what the scripture says, uh, without wise counsel, plans fail. You need to look for somebody else. If, 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 if you talk to that individual and you got a spark and by the time you get off the phone, you got a whole fire, that's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. You need to talk to somebody that's going to reel you in. Somebody, somebody that's going to make you think twice about what you say next and how you say it and how you walk out the next move you're going to make, right? Uh, even in the midst of a difficult situation, uh, you can have counsel to be able to win, even in the midst of adversity, right? So you gotta have that individual, just for a, for a moment. Let's think about if when Saul was tracking David, trying to take his life, if David would have had people around him that said, just kill him, just kill him, David, just kill him. Get it over with. You have plenty of chances, plenty of opportunities. The next time you get around him, just kill him, right? And suppose after hearing that enough times, David would have just, okay, all right, fine. He's after me. I'm going to get him for, for he gets me, right? It may seem like it makes sense, but David said it best. Saul was at one point in his life, one of God's anointed. And the Bible said, touch not mine anointed. Don't put your hands on what belongs to me. So David says, I'm going to trust God enough to let God handle that situation for me. Oftentimes our responses are, are oftentimes our responses speak less to our feelings and more to the fact that we don't trust God to handle our situations for us. 
I'm going to say it again. Oftentimes, our responses to situations speak less to our feelings and more to the fact that we don't trust God enough to handle the situation for us. We feel like we got to handle it ourselves or won't, or won't get handled. We think, hey, if I don't tell them about themselves, they won't never know. If I don't put them on blast on social media, everybody, nobody will know what they did. Nobody will know what I went through. Nobody will know what I experienced, right? The problem with that is, like it's a two-way street and two wrongs don't make a right. So now you've put yourself in a position where eventually God's got to respond to what you did too. Not necessary. Not necessary. Right. There comes a time in our walk with Christ where we have to trust God enough to hold our peace and let the Lord fight our battles. Uh, Proverbs 19 and 20. Listen to advice and accept instruction that you may gain wisdom in the future. Listen to advice and accept instruction so that you may gain wisdom in the future. So. There are times where I can be battling one thing and seek advice about the thing I'm battling and God can give me wisdom that's not even connected to what I'm facing right now, but it's needed for my later, right? Uh, God is not a God that is reactionary. He's not a God that's like, oh, you're in trouble. Oh, let me help, let me help and try to get you straight. Uh, oh, you got this going on. Oh, let me see if I can. Oh, you say, let me see if I can try to hit. That's, that's not how God is. Uh, that's oftentimes how people are. Uh, the word of the Lord says that there's no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted of that which ye are able, but will, with temptation, make a way to escape so that you may be able to bear it. That means... While your temptation is being prepared, your way of escape is being prepared simultaneously. God's never late. God's never late stepping in for you. God's never late reacting to the situation. Uh, God's not just finding out about it and figuring out, trying to figure out how to solve it. That's not the way he works, right? He says, I have a plan for you, and I know the plan that I have for you. And even when the snare and the trap of the enemy will try to interfere with that plan, I've got a way to escape. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard against him. I've got a way to escape. So for every unnecessary and negative emotional response you may have to feel in situations or circumstances wherein people may actually deserve it, God still gives you a way to escape. And the reality is that we have to be faith-filled and focused on him enough to realize that way when he gives it to us, right? Because sometimes we're so caught up in the moment and sometimes we're so caught up in us that he gives us the way to escape and we like, no, I'll take that back. <laughs> no, thanks. I don't, I don't want that. I, you don't know how long I've been waiting to tell him what I want to tell him. You don't know how long I've been. I, I, I done. Some of us focused on the get back. Y'all don't don't have to say amen. Don't say just look straight ahead if your camera on. Don't nobody even know I'm talking about you. Like some of us put we put work. We went to sleep thinking about the get back. We woke up working the plan out in our mind about how we were going to respond. And so when God submitted to us a way to escape, we didn't want to take it. You don't know how long I've been waiting on this moment, God. How long I've been waiting to clap back at him. But God's like, that's not your job. Your job is to be what it is that I call for you to be. Your job is to be able to walk out the function of forgiveness. Right? Okay. Uh, Proverbs 24 and 6. By wise counsel, you can wage war. And in abundance of counselors, there is victory. Sometimes we go to war unnecessarily, right? And things don't work the way we plan for them to work. And when things don't work the way that we plan for them to work, we find ourselves in a situation where we're trying to talk to God and figure out why it didn't work our way. 
man, God, I was I was right though. You know, they they did hurt me. They 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 did cross me. Uh, they they did say the wrong thing, you know, but it didn't end up the way I planned for it to end up. Have you ever seen an individual attempt to clap back and it severely backfire? Like I've I've seen stuff severely backfire. I've seen things backfire so bad that an individual's attempt to come back at somebody else ruined their situation made it infinitely worse because they were they were set on doing it their way right god says listen don't wage the war if you haven't talked to wise counsel about it and you, and you're not certain that this is absolutely positively the only way don't wage the war right do your best to walk out the function of forgiveness okay uh, so that's four, see godly advice. Uh, five is trust the Holy Spirit's guidance. When we honestly seek God's will, he often gives us an inner conviction or prompting to confirm the way he wants for us to go. All right. Uh, seek his guidance. Trust the Holy Spirit's guidance. Right. Uh Isaiah 30 and 21, Isaiah 30 and 21, this is what it says. It says, whether you turn to the right or the left, your ears will hear the voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. I want that kind of relationship with God. I want the kind of relationship that whispers and tells me, oh, that's enough, Nate. All right, hold what you got. Like, I know you bothered. I know you upset, but this ain't it. Don't go no further. If you go further, it's going to mess it up. It's going to mess you up. Hold what you got. And then I want to be able to have the faith to hear him, right? I want I want to be able to have the faith and the stick to to be able to hear him. Uh, and, and this is the thing, guys. I want to be clear. Uh, sometimes as believers, everybody around you won't understand your walk with Christ. Uh, here it is again. It says, you turn to the right or the left, your ears will hear a voice. Uh, Dr. Terry, it doesn't say everybody's ears going to hear the voice. So sometimes we're looking at other people thinking, hey, well, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And they not hearing what I'm hearing. And God's telling me, pump your brakes, man. Hold what you got. That's not the way. And, and I'm, I'm so set on doing it my way that I wanted to, well, what do you think? Well, they not hearing what you hear. Okay. Everybody's not going to hear it the way that you hear it. Everybody's not going to know. So there's going to be times where you might have your home girl or your sister girl or your, or your brother with you. And they might be like, yo, this is it. Like we can, we, we can write this, you know, we can, you know, we can tell them about themselves. We can whatever and all that kind of stuff. And you like, nah, just, just hang back. What? After what they said. After what they did, really? Everybody's not going to hear the voice when you hear the voice. But God's speaking to you so that he can command you about how you are supposed to walk, right? About how you are supposed to walk. It's the Holy Spirit's guidance. Uh, I know we're jumping around tonight, but I wanted to get the scriptures for you. Psalms 25, 4 through 5. Psalms 25, 4 through 5. I'm going to open up the floor in a second and let y'all talk back to me. This is what it says. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your path. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I will wait all the day long. All right. How you want to fix it, God? Like, I, I, let's let's ask ourselves this truth. Uh, when you're frustrated, when you're angry, when you're upset, how many pause and ask God how you want to fix it? You don't have to like wave your hand on that, but just ask yourself internally. How many times do you pause and ask God how do you want to fix this? 
Like, I'm not talking about uh, everybody. I'm talking about how, how many times do you stop and ask God, what would you have me to do about this? All right? And this psalm, it says, God, teach me your ways. Teach me your path. Lead me your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. And I'll wait until I hear from you to make sure when I'm responding, I'm responding the right way. All right? I'll wait until I hear from you. God's grace makes it so that you don't respond prematurely and find yourself in a worse situation than before, right? Sometimes we get so emotional. We see one thing, we feel one thing, and we, hey, I, I got to hear him and say something. And oftentimes it wasn't even what we thought. And if we just pump our brakes and pause and ask God, how you want me to fix this? How you want me to handle this? What do you think I should say about this? What do you think I should do about this? Right? God is saying, if you ask me, I'll show you. We find ourselves in worse situations because we don't ask. And if we don't ask, he said, if you ask me, I'll show you. But if I'm not asking, Minister Mike, if I'm, going, if I'm set on doing it Nate's way, then God's like, all right, well, let me know. Let me know when you're ready for me. Like, like God's not going to force us to do it his way if we don't even care enough to ask what he thinks about the situation or the circumstance. Isn't it interesting how we'll ask everybody around us what they think, but won't pause to ask God what he thinks? We'll pray and say stuff like, you know, God, help me. But we won't really give God space to say, what do you... What do you think as it pertains to scripture, as it pertains to my walk with you? What do you think about this? Right? Y'all know how we get some time when we, uh, you know, something frustrates us and we start playing that situation in our head. Y'all ever done that before? You play the situation in your head and you say to yourself, well, you know, next time I see them, I'm going to say this. And then when I say this, they're going to say that. And then when they say that, then I'm going to say this back. And, and then you've gotten yourself in a position where you're extremely upset about a situation that hadn't even happened. But I, I played the situation and the scenario over and over again in my head. And I'm doing all that, but I never paused to ask God what he thought about it. All right? We've got to be able to, as believers, understand uh, that God's not just like Sunday and Wednesday night. But he's trying to be active in every aspect of our lives. So God's trying to be active in the process of restoring relationships. Let him. God's trying to be active in the process of developing business principles and better habits of stewardship. Let him. Right? You got, I'm telling you, you'll be shocked how many times I've been to a business environments and had to speak at different business seminars. And I look at the principles that they put forth. So just wanted to look at the principles that the business put forth and it's all Bible. They ain't made nothing new. All they did was go jump in the book and pull all the principles from the Bible and it works. Right? So if God's trying to tell you, hey, this is what I want you to do next, let him, let him in. Like, let God into to the, to the restoration of your relationship. I know the person hurt you when you were young or they did something to you now or they used to be a friend and this and that or family or whatever. But listen, God's not trying to have you bound by all of those things. How many unnecessary chains are we carrying? And how long are we determined to carry them? Like at some point, if we're going to lighten the load, we've got to be willing to let stuff go. And we think that we're hurting people's feelings by remaining angry. Man, you are doing much more harm to yourself than you could ever do to them. Much more harm to yourself than you could ever do to them. All right. Somebody just say, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. All right. Uh, Psalms. Uh, hold on. Uh, 25 and 12. 
what man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. All right. If you focus on God and you focus on his way and you focus on what he says about your life, God says, I'll teach you how to respond. I'll teach you how to go the right way. Right. I'll teach you how to make the right move. All right. I'm going to drop down some. I don't want to overwhelm you guys with, with scriptures. Okay. All right. Last one for uh, trust in the Holy Spirit's guidance. All right. Uh, and we've talked about this before as it pertained to forgiveness. So I'm not going to stay on it long. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding, your feelings, your emotions, your desire to respond, whether it, uh, sometimes we can think we responding in the right way and mess stuff up. Like if, if we don't take time to really ask God about what he thinks about the situation, we can make it worse when we think we're making it better. Right. Right. Uh, so Proverbs said, trust him. Don't lean into what you think. Right. Give him space to operate within the situation and he'll make sure that he directs your path. All right. So when we're seeking out the Holy Spirit's guidance, we've the, the consistent message here is let God speak. Ask God what he thinks about the situation or circumstance. Right. So the person was wrong and what they did. OK. When, when people are really wrong, you're not going to get a whole lot of people disagreeing with you about whether they were wrong or not. The conversation then turns to how do you handle it? It's not about whether or not they were wrong. It's about what should your response be to whatever they did that was wrong. Okay. Uh, how do I make sure I'm not making a difficult situation worse? All right. And God is saying, if you trust me and you trust me to guide you and you trust me uh, to direct your path, then I'll do just that. All right. I'm on the last one here. And the last one is trust God for the outcome. Trust God for the outcome. What does that mean, Pastor Nate? That means uh, that you can't say I trust him to guide me, but then get mad with where he guides me. <laughs> All right. I got trust him to lead me, but then when he lead me, I'm like, oh God, you won't supposed to do it that way. They ain't even, they ain't even have to pay for what they did. Right? Like I, I don't see, I don't see where they they don't look like they were hurt like I was hurt. They don't look like they cried like I cried. They don't look like they were frustrated like I was frustrated. They don't look like they lost what I lost. Man, the enemy is so tactful, guys, because what he'll do is then he'll speak to, he'll whisper to you. He'll say, see, Nate, God didn't even get him the right way. You should have got him. And then what happens, we become frustrated that we didn't do what we thought we should have done in the first place. I knew I should have. I knew I should have said what I planned on saying. I knew I should have did what I planned on doing. And Mama Joyce, all these different things are happening in our mind, right? And and, and we're wrestling with our humanity because our humanity is telling us that, that they didn't have to pay like they should have had to pay. And all the time, says Robin, while our humanity is telling us they didn't have to pay why, like they should have had to pay, I believe that God is trying to demonstrate to us, but you didn't pay like you should have had to pay either. If if I would have made you pay everything that you owed, you would have been really up a creek. If I would have if I would have made you pay for every wrong turn you took, and if I would have made you pay for every wrong thing you did, and if I would have made you pay for every time you was out of line, or every time you messed up, or every time you came up short, every time you made a mistake or an intentional, if I would have made you pay, what would your life look like right now? And so far too often we're looking at individuals thinking to ourselves, but they didn't have to pay. Where we should be thinking to ourselves, God. 
God, I thank you for demonstrating to them the grace that you demonstrated to me. God, I thank you for being a God of mercy and not giving us everything that we deserve. God, I thank you for stepping in like you stepped in for me. And I'm familiar with that type of praise. Sometimes we can see somebody even, and um, I'm telling you, sometimes we can see people we ain't even on the same page with them, but we familiar with their praise because we know what that grace praise looks like. We know what that mercy praise looks like. We know what it is when we walk into a place of worship and we can't put our hands down and we can't start weeping and we can't stop saying, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I know I would have been swallowed up. Sometimes we need to forget about what folks said or did or how they made us feel and just recognize our praise. If you recognize their praise, then God will allow you the gift to be able to praise alongside of them. Yeah, alongside of the person who hurt you, alongside of the person who crossed you. God will put you in a position where he mends fences within the context of worship if you take your mind off of people and put it on him. I'm not telling you what I think. I've seen uh, I've seen relationships restored at the altar. I've seen people think that they could never be back in a position to see God's glory in their life. It restored at the altar. I, I, I've seen people praise that hadn't spoke in years. And a person recognizes the praise that looks familiar. It's the same praise I offered when God didn't give me what I deserved. It's the same praise I offer when he looked beyond my faults and saw my needs. It's the same praise I offer when I realize I could be forgiven. I could be forgiven. It's the same praise, Dr. Sam, it's the same praise I offer when I realize I could be free. That I didn't really have to carry around the bondage of all of my bad decision making. That, that, that God could still see me and did still see me as what he called and created for me to be. Uh, Pastor Pat, it's the same praise I offered when he told me I was still the apple of his eye. What? Listen, I'm telling you, when you've had that experience and you see another individual in that experience, It's everything that you, like you, you, it's almost like you're drawn into it because you know what it is, right? So trust God for the outcome. Trust God for the outcome. Uh, it may not always look like you expect for it to look. It may not always feel how you expect for it to feel. But trust God for the outcome. I'm going to open up the floor. Uh, any thoughts? Any moments of enlightenment? Just wave at me if you got anything. If not, I'm going to keep going. But any, I see you, Dr. Tara. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. As I was um, listening, one thing that really hit me, um, kind of like a oops upside the head, all of it was good, but this one really stood out. Everyone will not know um, and hear what you hear from God. And it's imperative that you have your relationship with God. But with that, not only with that relationship, recognizing the position that you play. Are you in a position of power? Are you in a position of authority? Now, yes, we have those things because those are, you know, that's who we are in Christ. But also when you look at those positions that you are within the work environment, um, if you are a leader in um, the church, I'm not saying that it, it you are above circumstances, but I am saying recognizing the cost. You have a greater responsibility and it's a greater cost because it impacts and affects people more often. For instance, I'm a licensed professional counselor. As a licensed professional counselor, I've had to take tests. There's codes of ethics that I have to follow. 
and even my behaviors in the community. For instance, if someone was to take pictures of me doing stuff, maybe getting into a brawl, that ain't happening. But I'm just saying, you know, it. praise the Lord that it has not. Uh, but, you know, if circumstances happen, they could send that information to the state boards. And then I would have to do trainings and classes in order to make sure that I protect my license. So some things I learned to let go because I have, it's too much of a cost. Um, and I will say, I don't have time for that. I don't have energy for that because that's my way of generating income. That's my livelihood. I have been in the field for over 20 something years. Um, I have worked to, you know, establish my reputation. And so recognizing that one cost, one choice, one to decision could alter my level of livelihood. That's why I'm particular about people that I hang out with or get into my car because I deal with addiction. So then I'm asking, um, might you participate in some um, illegal substances or whatever? Because if they, it's, those things are found in my car, then I am complicit, which means that I agree with the things that are, they are doing merely because I'm in their environment. And so those are the things that you have to recognize and start to ask yourself that you, you have to know where you are, not only in Christ, but also how one choice and one decision can alter it. So when I sit down to look at it, I'm like, it's not worth it. I will release it and let it go. I'm like, Lord, you don't even have to let me know how it's going to happen. I just know that you're a God that takes care of it because I don't necessarily need to see it. And I say a prayer for that person. Merely because I got to keep on moving because it's more important for me to hear from God than for me to know that God going to get you because it's enough for me to keep myself in track. And I'm like, I need it to come from, I need to be able to pray that it comes from my mouth to God's ears because I recognize the position that I'm in when it comes to people's lives being saved. Um, doesn't mean that I haven't gotten hurt. My Achilles heel, I would have to say, will be my family and the people that's real, real, real close to the circle. But I've gotten better because I'm like, I can't afford not to hear from God because that's that's a life. So just add a little bit more perspective, but that one really hit me. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Tara. Like, guys, it it costs something when you don't hear the voice. It costs something when you remember, right? The whole basis behind function, the functional forgiveness is willingly submitting to God's will over your own, right? Like, so when we're set on doing it our way, it, it really puts us in a difficult place where, you know, now I've said something or I've done something, or I've put myself in a compromising position because of my grief or my bitterness or my brokenness or my anger and et cetera, and et cetera, and et cetera. And like Dr. Tara said, it's not worth it. It's easier to let it. I'm not saying it's easy to let go. I'm saying it's easier than what it will cost you later on for holding on. It's easier to let go. Amen. I see you, Pastor Griffin. God bless you. God bless you. As I say, every time I listen to uh, my Bible class, I think about it. I thank God for it because it helps people grow. Um, years ago, we used to say when people come into the church, as their children, their children in the uh, word, we used to say they drink and milk. But this lesson will make you grow up where you can eat meat. And what I mean about eating meat, it would equip you to be able to take things uh, better than you have been taking them before. You know how to treat people. And a lot of things don't belong to us. It belongs to God. And let me uh, prove that to you with the scripture. Take a little trip with me over into Romans, the 12th chapter dealing with the uh, 19th to the 21st verse. And that 19th verse, it tells us vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. 
And when God repay, you have to be, pray for the person. That's not something for you to get joy out of. And I tell you why, because it tells you uh, in the 20th verse, it say, therefore, if that enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink. For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire over his head. And then it tells in the 21st verse, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. And that's our duty as saints of God. God bless you. Amen. 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 Do not repay evil for evil, but overcome evil with good. Absolutely. That's what we're called to do. Uh, if we only can love people who love us and do good to people who do good to us, we're no different than the world. Uh, what makes us different is our ability to walk like Christ commands, uh, even if we don't feel like it, right? Uh, it's walking by faith and not by sight. Thank you, Pastor Griffin. God bless you. Anyone else? Wave at me. Wave at me. The floor is open. I see you, Sister Vera. God bless you. Uh, good evening, Pastor Nathan. Good evening, everybody. Um, I would just like to share um, a little bit of, uh, I guess, a testimony, a story, something that happened. I'll try to make it short, but <clears throat> it's on forgiveness, and it's something that's been on my heart since we've been talking about this. So I'm so thankful to God for your for your study study of this uh, unforgiveness. Um, so I have a situation that's gone on for years where we had a family member. I say we because they fell out with me and some others in the family. And I, I just know that when it first happened, you know, I was so focused on my feelings and that person did something wrong and all of that. And I was like, okay, I'm good. They, you know, they did something wrong. But I tell you, God has worked on me over the over this period of time. And I'm just so thankful because first of all, just like um, Reverend Griffin, just you just said about praying for that person. First of all, they're family members. So I've been praying for them and I never stopped. But I started praying about the situation and God changed me. He changed the way that I thought about things because I had this, I'll be honest, I had this righteous kind of attitude about, well, I know I'm right. And they owe me an apology and over, you know, a period of time, God, as I started praying to God and God is, is working on me and I'm saying, if I'm in, I'm Bible study, I'm reading the word, I'm in church, something's wrong, you know, God is, so I, my prayer is always God create in me a clean heart so that, and, and drop the scales from my eyes so that I can start to see differently. And when I started praying that prayer constantly, Pastor Nate, God really did that. And he had me to see things in a different way. And it wasn't all about me and my feelings because I started to say, you know, I don't know what that person could be going through because we used to be really close. I don't know what that person could be going through, first of all. And after a period of time, God said, I asked God, you know, it's like, what? how do I deal with this? I, I'm saying I'm forgiving that person, but did I really? Because if I'm talking about it, I'm probably was, wasn't really in my heart having that forgiveness. And I called the person up and left a message on the phone. And I said, whatever I have done to offend you, I'm sorry, I love you. And that released me. And I know that when I see that person, it's so ironic, I haven't run into that person, but when I see that person, I know it's gonna be a reunion and a loving, because we have that love for each other and I know we do, but God changed me. And I know that that's who, that's the only thing I can control. I can pray for that person, which I do. And I ask God to work on me and show me. And, I, and I, I'm amazed that, and I feel stupid when I think back and say, I thought I was so dang on smart. I'm not all that smart. And he's still working on me. I'm still not there. But I'm just thankful that he did not give up on me and that I can truly say I have forgiven that person. Even though I felt like, you know, like I said, a long time ago, you would ask me, oh, they owe me, but that's not how it works. I, I apologize because I, I did owe them an apology. And so I'm just thankful. I'm, I don't take up too much time. I'm just thankful. Thank you for this um, 
for this lesson because it has been a it's been a blessed message. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, this very body of Christ. This is what it's about. Here again, here again, what she said. She said, I I think I thought they owed me, right? Because I'm thinking they were wrong, right? But, th but then she says, but I had to control what I could control. And so what you can't control is what they're going to say and what they're going to do and how they're going to feel, right? But what we can control is the thoughts that we allow to fester within ourselves. What we can control is how we walk like Christ and how we move like Christ and what we're willing to do. And so she says, I start, I love this. I'm not going to repeat everything you said, Sister Virica, but I'm telling you, I want to, because listen to what she said. She, Because you got you to go through the process. She said, I start praying for him first, right? Because this is the thing. I'm not ready to have a conversation if I haven't prayed for him yet. Can I help y'all there? Can I help y'all there? Because some of us be trying to have premature conversations and you haven't even went to the throne of grace and stood for that other person before God. And, and, and reality is if I'm not even in a position where I can pray for you, I'm not ready to talk to you yet. So she said, I waited until I could pray for him. And then once I prayed for him, then I picked up the phone. There is a walk about this thing by the God. There's an action involved. And she said, and listen, they didn't answer. Some of us would have just hung up the phone. Oh, I tried, Lord. That was my shot. I gave it a shot. That's not what she said. She said, I left the message. I let them know. They could have been looking at the phone saying, well, I ain't picking that up. I don't know what she called them about. And the last time I thought we had trouble. She says, I made sure I let them know that it's a new day. It's a new day. Whatever I did, not looking for an apology, right? But whatever I did, I'm sorry. And I forgive it. And I love you. Man, come on. Tell listen, God is amazing. Thank you so much, Sis Vera, for sharing that. That's what it's about, body of Christ. We we're not doing this just so we can say, oh, we learned a little bit more. We're doing this so we can show something. So we can walk it out. Right? So that we can be what it is that we're talking about. Right? So it, it, and, and there are times, listen, you go through the process and it might not happen overnight. And some, sometimes people cut you deep. So you need a little while to pray. You need a little while to pray for them. But then you pray for them and you realize in the midst of your prayers, hey, they're a child of the king, just like I'm a child of the king. On their worst day, God still love them, right? So God help me to be able to let this go so that I can move forward in who it is that you've called and anointed and ordained for me to be. Hallelujah. Thank you for sharing your heart, woman of God. We appreciate you. God bless you. Anyone else? Wave at me. Wave at me. The floor is open. Hallelujah. I, I, I see you. I see you, Deacon Pleasance. God bless you, sir. Hey, Pastor. Yeah, how everybody doing? You know, I um, I sometimes base myself as, and not only me, but God says, we our forgiveness starts at the beginning of the conversation. When you approach each other, you don't know what might be said or what might go on in it, but our forgiveness should start at the beginning. Sometimes we work or uh, walk around like a, a hot Pepsi Cola, and as soon as we take the top off it, it spear out all over the place. And still, if we're taking our time, and it's better with a cold Pepsi, you can open it up and it's going to set there. So God tells us at all times to, to relax and understand where each other coming from. Because a lot of times, like it says in Proverbs, it, Proverbs 10, 12, it says, haters stir up old quarrels and all kind of stuff like that. And we're being like that hot Pepsi, uh, being a hater, we grab it and all they want is, is a good shake. And you take the top of the spear off on everybody. Everybody around you are uh, upset, even you, you got stuff all over you and bring up old stuff from everywhere. You know, that's a hot Pepsi. We, What's in a Pepsi bottle? Pepsi. It's going to spill out. And then if you if you take a nice cold one out of the Pepsi, out of the uh, refrigerator, and you take the top off it, it ain't going to move. It ain't going to move. We can sit there and drink it all down what God has gave to us to drink down. Drink it down and be refreshed. So that's what that's what it's all about. We have to be calm, cool, and collected at all times because conversations can scare right off of, off of the bat. And the forgiveness begins 
when you open your mouth. Amen. Thank Amen. Thank you so much, Deacon Donald. God bless you. We appreciate you. Hey, listen, guys, you can't you can't come into the conversation hot and think that you're gonna make progress. You can't come into the conversation. Oh, I'm about to tell them how I feel. If you if you coming into the conversation with your eyes wider than they usually are, and, and your hands and y'all listen, no, it's not the time to talk. It's not. You need to reschedule the conversation. You need to say, okay, we need to, I'm not in the right place for this right now, right? If you coming in like that, it's not the right time to talk. You need to calm down, reel yourself in, right? Allow the Holy Spirit to be able to speak through you. Uh, so like, like Deke said, you can drink down God's goodness and God's grace and God's glory throughout your process. Thank you so much for sharing. Deacon Donald, we appreciate you. God bless you. Anyone else, wave at me. Are you waving, Cousin Pat? Are you waving? I can't tell. Yes, I'm turning sideways. <laughs> okay, okay. Go ahead. The floor is yours. I, I just want to say it was such a blessing um, for Psalms 1 to 3 because there was times I could not do this. It was times that I had walked in the counsel of the ungodly. I looked forward to it because I had low self-esteem. I thought they were knew more than I did and had more experience than I did. And plus, I felt like I need to tell you right now exactly how I feel. But what it did, it kept me in complete turmoil. It kept me complete frustrated. It kept me completely not even calling on God. As a matter of fact, I didn't even want to call on God. I felt like I need to tell you because, uh, God, you can take care of somebody else. I take care of this. But what it did, it just took my peace away. It took my... Um, inside a way to even talk to God. It even had me at a point that when I did this without talking to God first, I couldn't even bring myself to come to church. And if I saw the person in public or in church, I got this extra energy inside. Now I'm tired, but I get this extra energy inside just to go over and tell you what I feel you should do. And I thank God when he tells us to come to him how to meditate and that was a really a difficult thing for me to do because growing up i was i felt i was never heard and i made up my mind oh you will hear me but i found out that is a horrible tormented way to live and to express yourself now that we know the lord it took my peace away it took my comfort away it made me feel ignorant and make me feel like I couldn't be around the people of God, that they was all against me. They all got something to say I can say. The devil had me tied up and tangled up. But thank God that he came to me one day and he said to me, who are you listening to? Whose report are you believing? Find that pat in my word. And that's when I began to be like a tree planted by the rivers. I just want to share the goodness of the Lord in this chick here life, how I was once tormented, how it kept me from my family for over 30 years. I felt totally isolated and alone because of those thoughts. So I thank God how he teaches us a better way of living and how he teaches us not to sabotage ourselves. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Amen. Nate. Hey, man, thank you so much, Cousin Pat. She said, God teaches us a better way of living. Guys, there's a better way. If you would let him teach you, there's a better way. Some of us are carrying. I'm not, I'm not, and so here's the thing I think it's important that we realize. I'm not suggesting that the things that hurt didn't really hurt. I, I'm not suggesting that the person wasn't wrong. I'm not suggesting uh, that in the moment it didn't cut you deep. I'm not saying any of that. What I'm saying is that the enemy, if we allow him, will utilize that moment in time to restrict you for the rest of your life. Who you? She just said it. She said, I didn't feel heard. So I said to myself, I'm going to make you hear me. Imagine carrying that, right? You walking around, everybody, you come, people might genuinely be interested in what you got to say, but because the way you walk up in the situation, I'm going to make you. Wait a minute, what's going on, right? 
the enemy will take the moment that that kid in you experienced, that the child in you experienced, that the adolescent or the teen in you experienced, that the young adult experienced, that the enemy will take that moment and he will utilize that moment to attempt to imprison you for the rest of your life. And this is what he'll say. You should never let that go. Don't never let that go. Because this, this is the thing. And this is, this is how he whispers. He says, he says, if you let it go, then it might happen again. You got, you got to hold on to it. So you keep your guard up. See, he make it make sense. He don't, he don't make it sound like unforgiveness. He make it sound like you keeping your guard up. You, you going you gonna make sure I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I'm looking out for me, man. That's not what it is. And we get into a place where we feel alone and we feel dejected and we feel ostracized, right? And we feel like the people who are supposed to love us or should love us for whatever reason, our relationship with them is broken. And all the while God is whispering to us, make your request known unto me. If you want restoration, make it known unto me. If you want me to mend the broken places, make it known unto me. And he has a promise associated with your vulnerability and expressing your heart to him. He says, I'll guard what you give to me. I'll protect your heart and I'll protect your mind. If you give it to me, right? But that means we got to be willing to be vulnerable, y'all. Like, listen, that's not easy. That's not easy because, and I'm telling, that's not easy for humanity, Forget the era that we live in or so. It's not easy for humans, period. I need you to understand the first thing that Adam and, Adam and his wife did when they fell was cover up their nakedness. That means the very first thing they did was, a, was look for a way to hide their vulnerability, right? That's the very first thing humanity did after the fall. Let me cover myself up. Let me make sure can't nobody see my, my brokenness. Can't nobody see my scars, right? That's the same thing people are doing today. Spend so much time and so much energy and so much effort trying to cover broken places that we never really give it to God. Pastor Pat, I saw you wave at me. God bless you. The floor is yours. Praise the Lord, everybody. There are several things that pulled out at me, but I'm just not going to exhaust the time. However, um, seeking godly advice, when I'm seeking him, when I'm looking for it, for, for it when I'm in that posture, my, my attitude is different. I certainly can't go full of myself when I'm seeking godly advice. Um, and I will say this. Now, if I can take me to God, I can take that heaviness, that unforgiveness, whatever that thing is, I can take it to him in a spirit of humility, but I can't go in as if I already got the answer. So, so that's the thing, seeking godly advice. And even in Psalm 1, um, blessed is the man, happy, privileged, you know, is the man. There, there's a posture with that, even with the, the seeking and being in the presence of God, acknowledging that I need him. But this is the word, two words that, that, that stick out to me. Uh, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. That's a whole different attitude right there. What are we delighting in? What are we delighting in? And then when you say it, trust God for the outcome. You also said something about inquiring, asking God, asking God about a situation. So sometimes we don't ask God because we may not like the outcome. We may not like his response to what we're asking. And you said something about, we'll ask this person, we'll ask that person. You know, we, we, we're asking people about our purpose, our destiny. They don't know. And so the thing is, so sometimes we might be in a position, in a place, you know, uh, that we really don't want to hear what God has to say. Because guess what? That means that when he tells me something, guess what? I am accountable for what he has told me, but he has spoken to me. I'm accountable for it now. But as long as I keep my head in the proverbial sand, 
as long as I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm just, I'm just not going to, I'm not going to go there. We go where we talk to people, to the ones that we expect them to tell us what we want to hear. And so, you know, and, and if nobody's going to give you the truth, certainly it's going to be God. And so the thing is, I'm just out here all by myself, you know, because there are times that I'm going to God. And again, humility, I'm going to God because, Lord, I want to be right. Nothing between my Savior and my soul. I want to be right. And oftentimes, you know, he will show me things about myself that I don't want to see. And so, but, but again, you know, are you delighting in him? Because if you're delighting in him, there are some things you want. You want God to shine the light from heaven on your soul. You want to be rid of those things. So, so that's the thing. You know, what are we, what are we delighting in? What are we delighting in? Is my delight that, 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 that I got to be right in this situation? No, I don't have to be right. I don't have to, I don't have to be right. And I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not the smartest, the smartest person in the room. I don't have to be right. My very soul is at stake here. I don't have to be right. So anyway, I have, I talk to myself. So the thing is meditate, you know, uh, in his law, doth he meditate day and night, day and night, day and night. And, and, and even the, 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 the scripture that you read in Psalm, Psalm 25, four through five, and even how we wait on him all the day, we wait on him. I'm telling you, there, there is a posture, there is a, a, an, an attitude. It is, it is, it is, it is not in you. It's, it's, you. You can't be full of yourself, not when you're waiting, waiting on God and you're waiting in God. And, and so, and you, 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 you want to be right. You, you, you know, you want to be right with him. You want to be in right relationship. And the other thing is you said, trust God for the outcome. So I might have to wait. It, it, it's something called process. And, and, and you said that, that that sometimes people feel like, well, you know, well, I should have just taken matters into my own hands. I would have I would have fixed it better than God. That's a very dangerous place to be. That is a very dangerous place to be. Well, I could have done it like this, or I could have done it like, well, Lord, you know, and again, you know, you 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 can't instruct. You can't instruct God. You you can't do that. And so 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 the thing you can try, but you can't. So so when we're seeking God, we're waiting for His answer. And then you you know, um, and I want to touch this too. Um, when we're when we're meditating, we're pondering, we're focused. That that that's an action. It's it's a participation on your part when you're waiting, when you're meditating on God. And then I found another, another definition for meditate. It means to mutter, it means to speak. So I'm thinking, I'm just gonna just, you know, um, you know, in my mind, in my head, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, you know, in my thoughts, but, but you mutter, you mutter in a very low tone. So how many of us, if we, if we mutter, if we meditate in a very low tone, you know, and, 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 and speak the word of God over ourselves, over in that situation, would it cause us not to error if we did that? And so meditating day and night, I, 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 maybe y'all just combed over that. In his law, doth he meditate day and night? So, 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 so that's the whole the whole day, all day long, mm -hmm. you know? And, and and we don't, you know, because we, we, we want to practice that because we be, you know, life be life. -y. And so we, we, we have to, <clears throat> we, we, we have to, 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 to focus on those things that need to be taken care of in that moment. And sometimes saints of God, we don't always make God the first priority. We don't always make him the first, um, um, the, 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 the first uh, a recourse or the first, the, the, the first. We don't always do that. And so we think that there are some things where I can, I can handle this. Lord, I'll save the big thing for you, but, but this one right here, I can handle this. But those small foxes, can get you in trouble. Like the woman of God, uh, Lady Pat was saying, you know, well, I, I, I'm just going to be heard, you know? Um, and so, so, so meditating, 
meditating on the word, meditating on God day and night. And that is how we, we, we become like that tree. And listen, that tree is nurtured. <clears throat> that tree, the roots are nurtured. And so we're nurtured, we're able to stand, we're able to withstand when we are nurtured in the word of the Lord. Um, Elder was talking about uh, the strong, I think he said something about strong meat. Um, so, so, but some of us, you know, we, we still desire the sincere milk of the word. And that's a good place to be, that is a good place to be too. So anyway, so we just want to meditate on the word we, while we're seeking God. We want to trust God for the outcome, for the process of that thing. And sometimes we abort too quickly. We abort too quickly because it's like, Lord, you're taking too long. You take, Lord, you're taking too long. You know, so, so, so just wait on him and wait in him. And, and even seeking godly, seeking godly advice already. Have the mindset that, look, I, I may get cut up, you know, uh, coming and going. I may get cut. I, I, it may be a big puddle of blood. But, you know, when I'm seeking godly advice, I may be going into in, in this thing and I don't have all the answers. I, I may be going into this situation jacked up. And so I need to go to God. I need to seek his, his, his counsel, even through men, through women. That, that, that have the mind of God that's going to tell me what? The truth, not just what I want to hear, but you're going to tell me the truth. And that's, that's listen, we're going to meditate on this thing day and night. We're not going to, and, and, and we have to meditate. We have to meditate on his word day and night, not meditating on the situation, the pain, the suffering, how this person did this to me, this person did that to me. Because if, we, if we're focused on that, then we're not going to be open to what the Holy Spirit wants to say and what the Holy Spirit wants to do, what the Holy Spirit needs to do in us. And God will make a way. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor Pat. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. I want to just touch on really quickly a couple things that she said. Uh, first thing, uh, I'm just going to summarize part of it. Uh, 40th chapter of Isaiah, uh, the 29th verse, he gives power to the faint and to them who have no might, he increases strength. The youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Some of the fatigue that we face, body of Christ, is because of our intention to do it ourselves, our way. We've become tired because then we have to go back and try to fix our mess, right? God says, they that wait upon you will renew your strength if you have the faith to wait on me and do it my way. They shall mount up on, on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Uh, first thing I want, second thing I want to touch on that Pastor Pat said is this. Uh, some of us are angry because we don't want to do it God's way. Like, like uh, I, don't, I don't need you to say nothing because, you know, I know it's hard to say. But some of us get mad at God because what he asking us to do. Uh, I don't even need you to say it. I'm right. So uh, Romans 9 and 33 says, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense, and whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Uh, we don't hear this verse a lot, Minister Mike. It says, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense. It's talking about Jesus as a stumbling stone and a rock of offense because he's going to challenge us to do it his way. He's going to challenge us to respond the way he tells us to respond rather than the way we want to respond. He's going to challenge us to forgive when we don't feel like it, right? 
but this is the guarantee. If you believe on me, if you trust on me, right, I won't put you to shame. In other words, uh, it's a stone that's put there. He says, but if you come looking for me, you'll find me along the way, but not in the way. If, if, if you really come after me, you'll find me along the way, right? So let's, let's focus on what it is that God is challenging us to do. And when you feel yourself getting offended because of what he's asking you to do, do your very best to turn that part off, man. Uh, it's people that's, that walked away from church because they were offended by Jesus, right? They were offended. Man, I can't believe God would tell me to forgive that person after what they did to me. I ain't never letting that go, right? And so they decided to walk away, right? Man, I can't I can't believe God would, would, would tell me I got to bless somebody who did something bad and wrong to me. Man, I ain't never... Psh, that's crazy. See, that's that's why I don't do that's why I don't do that religion stuff. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I can't, man, I can't believe God would 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 would, would challenge me to 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 lay aside my will and to accept his will, but like I'm not even sure what that is or what that looked like, man. See, now nah, these people just want to be in control. That's why I don't fool with it. Yeah. Yeah. Offended by him, right? I can't believe God would tell me to lay aside uh, a sexual immorality. And, and, and I can't believe God would tell me I can't talk about what I want to talk about and post what I want to post and do what I want to do. I'm just being me. I'm living. I'm doing me. Yep. Offended. Offended by God. Like, just offended. And so, rather than being mature enough as believers to be like, hey, I got some stuff I need to work on. We get offended. Like, that's what wrong does. Paul, Paul said that. It's a stumbling stone, a rock of offense placed in the middle of Zion. Right? Don't be offended by what God is challenging us to do. I'm not saying that is easy, but what I do guarantee you is whatever he asked, he'll empower. I promise whatever he requests, he will equip you for. And the moment that you take your first step in that direction, God will begin to give you everything you need to take your second and your third and your fourth and your fifth and your sixth until you win. It is simply a conversation of whose will, whose will is going to win. So we going to do it my way or we going to do it his. I'm finished, body of Christ. Listen, thank you guys for locking on and, and, and logging in the night. Uh, we went a little bit long, but I believe God was glorified in and through it all. We appreciate you all for every visitor we had. Again, Jameer, man, love you. God bless you. Thank you so much for rocking with us this evening. Uh, any other visitors that we have, we appreciate you. We thank God for you. Uh, if it's your first time, just holler at us through the chat. Let us know so we can shout you out. But we really appreciate you all uh, being here. We appreciate your presence. Uh, hallelujah. 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 And listen, uh, let's continue to work on this forgiveness thing. Uh, we almost, where we going with forgiveness? We got one more part of forgiveness we got to talk about. I'm excited about it. Um, I'm so excited about, I'm so excited about it, Dr. Tara. I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to leave it in Bible study or take it to a Sunday. I'm excited about it. I, I just don't, I don't want nobody to miss the last part. So <laughs> I'm I'm really, I don't know, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'm excited about it. Uh so please, man, you guys uh walk out what we've been talking about. I see you, says Ken. Says Ken said, do both. You ain't gotta limit yourself to one or the other. Do both. <laughs> I feel you. Uh let's walk out what we've been talking about, body of Christ. Uh, thank you again so much to everybody who shared their hearts on tonight, everybody who 
uh, spoke and everybody who typed in the chat and communicated. Uh, thank you for testimonies of what forgiveness looked like. Says Vera, God bless you uh, so much for sharing your testimony. This is what it's all about, body of Christ. It's about taking what God is pouring and then putting it into action, right? Not just being in the same position that we were in before, right? But putting it into action, right? The word of the Lord says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Yes. I believe by the testimony she shared tonight, somebody started thinking. Somebody was like, man, I, I need to reach out. I need to reach out too. Like I need, I need to do that, right? I need to move like that, yeah. right? Iron sharpens iron. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. So uh, again, thank you all so much for everything that was shared uh, on this evening. Uh, we love you. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. I would ask uh, that you would continue to, to keep one another lifted. Everybody who's in need of any type of healing, uh, let's just keep our brothers and sisters in Christ lifted in prayer. Uh, uh, I, I know... Uh, a mother, Mother Wright, Deacon Wright's mom, uh, she's still going through the process. Uh, she was hospitalized, but uh, she's going through the process. So let's please keep her lifted. Uh, keep Deacon Wright and his sister lifted as they continue to uh, care for her. Uh, I received a, a message that uh, uh, says April's brother's wife passed away today. Uh, so let's please keep uh, this is April's brother. This is April, her entire family, in our prayers. Uh, let's continue to keep them lifted. Uh, let's continue to keep Brother mm -hmm. Devon lifted as God continues to touch and heal him. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, all of our brothers and sisters in Christ, I, I know it's a lot more names on the list. I don't have it right in front of me, but you guys know, if you know uh, who who's in need, uh, I'm just going to encourage you to type it in the chat right now. Call her name out right now. Uh, Father, we thank you for healing right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you that your word declares that healing is the children's bread. And right now, God, uh, we just pray that you would manifest that which you have given us access to. Surely you were, we were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon you. And with your stripes, we're already healed. And so, God, I pray that you would continue to move in that vein right now in the name of Jesus, that you would touch. Uh, that you would heal, that you would set free, that you would renew, that you would restore, that you would revive uh, every bodily function, God, that you would revive every, ev every bodily function, everything that's needed, God. You, you created us. You breathe life into us. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would just revive what's ever needed uh, for these, your people, God, and you have given to us the ministry of reconciliation and called for us to be your ambassadors. As such, God, you have positioned us to stand in the gap for our brothers and sisters in Christ. So right now, as names are entering into the chat and as individuals are calling names out before the throne of grace, I thank you that you have given us the grace and the mercy to stand in the gap for our brothers and sisters in Christ as intercessors, God. And so as we stand for them, we thank you, God, that you're touching and that you're setting free and that you're healing. We plead the blood of Jesus right now, God, over the over them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Anybody stressing and uh, wrestling stress and anxiety and depression, any suicidal ideations happening right now, God, we rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. We pray that you would pluck it up from the root, God, that you would cast it out right now in the name of Jesus, uh, that you would remind us that we are here on purpose, for purpose, chosen for such a time as this. And every snare and every trap and every lie that the enemy told, God, we come against it right now in the name of Jesus. And we declare victory for these, your people. Oh, Father, we thank you uh, for continuing to manifest your plans in our lives, even when our plans don't work the way we expected. And even when things aren't going the way that we thought, God, we thank you that you are in absolute and total control, that you know the plans that you have for us, plans to prosper us, to give us hope and a future. So God, continue to manifest that glory right now in these your people father we thank you 
for restoring families right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you uh, for bringing siblings back together, God. We thank you for bringing parents back to their children and children back to their parents, God. We thank you uh, for restoring and mending covenants right now in the name of Jesus, God. We give you glory uh, for giving peace back right now in the name of Jesus. Your word says that you were chastised for our peace. You declared it. My peace I give to you. My peace I leave to you, not as the world giveth. In other words, Father, you didn't give us a peace that could be be changed and shifted with every wind that blows, with every thing that happens, with every circumstance that arises, but you gave us a peace rooted solely in you. And so we give you glory for that peace, God. We thank you for meaningful respite. We thank you, God, for gracious rest. We thank you even now, God, that we're being restored in you, uh, that we are being renewed and revived in you. Now, God, as we depart from this place, but never from your presence, we pray that you would continue to help us to be more like you, help us to walk like you and talk like you and think like you. God, continue to strengthen our prayer life, continue to help us to demonstrate compassion, continue to help us walk in forgiveness, God, with the focus of forgiveness and the function of forgiveness, God. Help us to implement the things that we have learned so that we can be more like you. Do it for us in Jesus' name. I thank you for every person on this line. I thank you for their heart for you, in the middle of the week, they position themselves to hear about you. I pray, God, that even when we end this session, you'll continue to speak. I pray, God, that even as they lay down and close their eyes tonight, that you'll continue to speak, that you'll continue to give unto them everything that they were in need of for their sacrifice made here and positioning themselves for you. Now, God, allow no evil to befall us, neither let any plague come near our tent. Thank you, great God, that you are for giving your angels charge over us to keep us in all of our ways. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray this to God, our Father, through the power and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and we thank you in advance. Amen. God bless you guys. Amen. Amen. Heaven smile upon you. Thank you all for being Amen. here. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Enjoy it, y'all, tonight. Y'all have a good, good night. Good night. Enjoy it, y'all. Y'all have a good, good night. night. Love your family. Well, love y'all. Good night. Good love night. you guys. Good love night. You guys. Excellent night. Excellent. 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 Jameer, it's great to see you, bro. I'm happy to be here. Man, Hallelujah. You, man. Appreciate you rocking with us tonight, man. I pray it was a blessing. Always. Need I needed this honestly, <laughs> Lebanon, Venezuela. I needed this. Yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. We love you, dude. We stay yeah. stay yeah. lifting you up in prayer, man. I know it's different. I know you go a lot of places and experience a lot of things, but we continue to pray God's presence and grace over your life, man. Every step you take, every move you make, uh, you. we love you, bro. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Good night, all. Good night. Good night. Love y'all. Love you, Mama. Good night, God. Love y'all. Yes. Good night. Good night. Love you, Shannon. God bless you. Love you too. God bless. Good to see your picture, Juanita. Bye, Juanita. Love you too. Love, Good love night, you. everyone. Love you. And love you, Pam. Good night. Thank Good night. Thank you. Appreciate Good you, night. Minister Raj. Thank you, sir. All right, y'all. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Minister Ron. Thank you, Minister Ron. Have a good one. All right. Good night, y'all. Anyone who can get a, a copy of this to send to people that can't get on Bible study? Yes, ma'am. There should be. Let me double check. There should be. Uh, they they record it. So I would really uh, appreciate it. I have a young lady that she has uh, disability children, and she wants to get on the Bible study.